we are living in a new reality right now. Um, where extreme weather events are happening in the Pacific and all over the world. And this is intensified by climate change and public health emergencies. And for us that is working on life-saving uh, humanitarian action, MIST just provides us a fantastic technology and, and to help governments uh, perform this life-saving work for their constituents. And this is why it is important to continuously engage government and the health system so that they can always prioritize this because most often an emergency, uh, sexual and reproductive health is deprioritized over food, water, and shelter. We know those things are very important, but we also know that two-thirds of preventable maternal deaths actually happen in, in context with, uh, in humanitarian context, and therefore, uh, as UNFPA and our mandate is really ensuring the dignity and safety and security of women and girls in crisis, we really have to position MISP as a life-saving, as an effective life-saving tool for governments and for communities to use. The Minimum Initial Service Package, or MISP, for sexual and reproductive health, is an international standard and set of essential life-saving actions and services that should be implemented at the onset of every humanitarian crisis to save the lives of women and girls. MISP is a starting point for sexual and reproductive health programming in humanitarian emergencies and should be sustained and built upon with comprehensive sexual and reproductive health services throughout protracted crises and recovery. In the Philippines, the MISP has been an essential tool in asking the right questions about what women and girls need in a crisis. It's more of highlighting the unique needs of women and girls and their vulner vulnerabilities during emergencies. This is very important for introducing and making MISP relevant to government and non-government stakeholders. What are these unique needs and vulnerabilities where will I give birth no? during an emergency situation? Um, I don't plan to have a child now. What can I do? Um, my vulnerabilities to violence is heightened during emergencies, how I can prevent it. And if the event happens that I am a survivor, what services can I go to? So these are the things that we want to highlight. The objectives of the MISP are Ensure the health sector identifies an organization to lead implementation. Prevent sexual violence and respond to the needs of survivors. Prevent the transmission of and reduce morbidity and mortality due to HIV and other sexually transmitted infections. Prevent excess maternal and newborn morbidity and mortality. Prevent unintended pregnancies. Plan for comprehensive sexual and reproductive health services integrated into primary health care. The MISP includes the priority of ensuring safe abortion care to the full extent of the law. In Afghanistan, the MISP has been used as a tool to build capacity in the health care system and sustain services that are adapted to the local context. A cornerstone of this initiative is the continuous capacity building of both health and non-health personnel. Through training in workshops, individuals are equipped with the knowledge and skills to effectively implement the MISP. This preparation contributes to a more efficient humanitarian response. This dynamic approach facilitates a better understanding of people's unique requirements, allowing for a response tailored to their realities. It is a safeguard against a one-size-fits-all approach. In Indonesia, the MISP has been used as a tool for preparedness. It has increased collaboration and identified stakeholders so that when an emergency happens, like the Sianjur earthquake in 2022, MISP partners were able to deploy quickly. Deployment and readiness and strong capacity of the MISP team can be deployed within 24 hours and provide support for coordination and also sexual reproductive health services. So we're able to provide better and speedy response to save women's life. MISP is about a whole network of trained professionals who know how to meet the needs of the most marginalized, especially women and girls, when disasters hit. Most women and girls experience it as a simple dignity kit. 
But that kit represents the entire support system that the MISP network has built. Having those essential supplies pre-positioned, having them ready to deploy, can make such a difference for women in disasters. And we had to give the dignity uh, back because these were the very things that were in that bag that uh, women were not able to get at a disaster when disaster struck. So there were torches, there were whistles, like if there's a natural disaster, uh, you can blow them, we throw them. See, this is a whistle, because you may be wondering, it's not only for our spots, it's for to tell us where you are, in case you get lost in the crowd or out in the forest somewhere. We know where you are, so we can go come to you. And we had torches, uh, we had uh, sanitary pads for them, we had um, uh, their changes, uh, uh, they, they even had a towel. We were so surprised because UNFPA could think of all that. What a woman needed. Like if there's a disaster, she doesn't have to run back home. And uh, so, oh, uh, you, know, you know, like right now, I'm having my period. I have to go back and get that. It's all there in the dignity pack. And they were so happy when they opened it in front of us because it was in a special bag too. They didn't have to go home for all of that. It was just there. When the disaster struck, they just grabbed the, that bag and then off they go to the, the place where they're supposed to stay. MISP is about much more than medical services or supplies. For me, MISP transcends medical services. It is a pathway for women and girls to, the, to dignity, to security, to safety, and a semblance of normalcy. That is what MISP is for me.